Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Apostolic Gatherings Network. And I have a very good message for us today. And it's a simple one. It's the most powerful one. And it's awesome. And it's simple. It's called the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, first of all, this has been brewing in my spirit. In the end time that we're living in right now, um, I've been feeling a strong push. Uh, there's a lot of focuses. A lot of people are focused on different things, different themes. But I could feel it in my spirit that the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, his story and his purpose is coming back to the forefront. And it's coming back to the number one uh, uh, story to be talked about. And so I want to just talk about that. I want to explain it. I want to tell you what the gospel is and I hope you share it I hope you experience it because it's the reason why we live it's the reason why we're here it's simple we've got to believe the gospel one of the first things Jesus preached was repent and believe the gospel we've got to repent and believe the gospel we hear a lot of things talked about there's a lot of talks given there's a lot of speeches given there's a lot of teaching and preaching and whatever you want to lecturing whatever you want to call it a lot of oratory but what's coming the Holy Ghost is telling me what's coming up is people are going to that are generally called by God are going to get a strong push starting now to preach and teach the gospel more than anything and I know there's like I said there's a lot of themes that are really popular right now everybody's got their own theme but right now is in time it's the end time. And so the Lord is pushing his gospel because we are living in the end time. Now we got to believe the gospel. So what is the gospel? Uh, we're going to go to 1 Timothy 3.16. It's found in your Bible or in your Bible app. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. In other words, without, without us fighting over it, without us getting into an argument, without us having all kinds of controversy... Greatest mystery of godliness. It's plain and simple. It's so hard to phantom and understand. Even when you do uh, start to get astute with the scriptures, you start to learn the scriptures, you get revelation in the Holy Ghost, and you start to understand the deep things of God, it's still mind-blowing. In other words, this mystery is great. It still can't even comprehend it completely. But he says, this right here is enough for us to know, for us to get what we need right now for our salvation. Great is this mystery of godliness. And then he tells you, he's telling Timothy, the Apostle Paul, what it is. God was manifest in the flesh. In other words, the Almighty God, the God that cannot be approached, that's a consuming fire, that's an eternal spirit that no man can see or approach, became flesh, manifested himself in flesh. In other words, God became a human. What a mystery that God that can not be held down, that encompasses all in all, would confine himself to a fleshly tent, as they would call it, or a human person, that he would become a man. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a son. The eternal heavenly father that created all things was born of a virgin, therefore became a son. God became man. He was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. And we know that's talking about Jesus Christ. So God uh, became a man, and his name was Jesus, and he died for our sins so that he can reverse the curse that Adam got us into so that we can have a way out. Like there's all kinds of purposes that mankind will have in his heart, the Bible says, but God is the one that directs his steps. Because no matter what we get ourselves involved in, God's will is that we should not perish, that we should all come to repentance. It's going to draw us to his gospel. The Apostle Paul said, all these things that have happened to me have happened for the furtherance of the gospel. So what is the gospel? God had to become a man to save us. And his name is Jesus Christ. So moreover, the Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel, this good news story, which I preached to you, which also you received and which you stand, by which you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preached to you. So the gospel is which you stand, the gospel what keeps you, and the gospel is what saves you if you keep it. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ, that God that manifest in the flesh, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And exactly how it was said, how it was prophesied, how it was taught, it happened. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 4. So the gospel is that God became a man and we know who that man is, Jesus Christ. And he had to die. He had to bleed the perfect sinless blood that would be the Lamb of God which takes away the sin of the world to become that perfect sacrifice because you and I were dead in our trespasses, in our sins. We just had evil thoughts and we couldn't save ourselves. So God had to save us himself by paying the price and becoming a human, bleeding his blood, had to die in our place and then was buried and rose again in newness of life to start the mode of salvation, to start the new human race that we now, if we would repent and believe the gospel, we can attain salvation. We can have a new birth experience. We can be born again. We can be saved. We can benefit from the gospel. And it's not just about believe and be saved. Jesus says, if he who believes and is baptized shall be saved. So we got to embrace the entirety of the gospel and all of what it entails to benefit from it. So let me, let's, let's go on here. What do we got to do? We have to believe and obey. So let's talk about this. Romans chapter 6 verses 1 through 8. The Apostle Paul starts to break down the intricacies of the gospel. He starts to break down the mode of salvation. He starts to explain to you how the death, the burial, and the resurrection, the gospel of Jesus Christ, correlates with our salvation and how we have got to experience it. He tells you how it's supposed to happen and the only way that it happens so that we can experience exactly how it happens. So here, let's read. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? In other words, are we going to continue in our old life before Christ? No, of course not. He says, certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Now, see, here he's talking about here. We're supposed to die to our sinful life. In other words, that's repentance. Repentance is death to self, death to sin, to be alive toward Christ. We turn away from our evil, wicked ways. We turn away from the curse uh, of sin that was upon the human race, that because of Adam's sin, sin passed upon all humans. He says, and then we die. We die to sin. He says, you are die. You were buried with Christ in baptism. In other words, you don't just believe, I believe, I have faith, so I'm saved. No, he says, you believe just like Jesus says, and you get baptized. When you're baptized, you're burying the old man of sin. This is the gospel, is that Jesus who died, was buried, and rose, so that you and I can die, be buried, and rose, spiritually. Let me read it to you. Therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead the human body of Jesus, by the glory of the eternal spirit, the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certain we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man person was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin. It's broken. The power of sin. You are made a new creation in Christ. For he who has died has been freed from sin. 
Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him. So here's the gospel. Jesus died on the cross, was buried in the grave, and rose in newness of life so that we, in believing and obeying the gospel, should die to our sinful uh, sinfulness, our sinful nature, and then be buried in baptism. We get dunked in the water, under the water in the name of Jesus Christ, being buried in Christ. The Bible says in Acts 4.12, there's no other name given under heaven among men by whereby we must be saved. And everybody in the book Acts and throughout the epistles was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other mode. Baptized in the name. So when we get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and we go under the water, we're burying the old person of sin and all our sins uh, from the past are washed away. We are washed in the blood. When the name of Jesus is pronounced according to our profession of faith, the blood is activated and washes away our sins. And we raise in newness of life. And then we must receive the Holy Ghost uh, to have Christ in us, the hope of glory. And now we are a new creation in Christ. We are no longer under the bondage of sin. We are no longer slaves to sin. We are not under the curse of Adam. We are now under Jesus Christ. And we are new creations in him. That's why he says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. So we must repent and be baptized in Jesus' name and receive the Holy Ghost uh, to uh, benefit the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the whole purpose of life, is the gospel. We've got to repent and believe the gospel. We've got to obey the gospel. We've got to, we've got to experience the gospel and share the gospel. This is what it's all about. It's, the, the apostle even said, if, if in this life we only had hope, we are of all people the most miserable. Us Christian apostolics, we're the most miserable if we think that this is all it is. No, the reason why we have the gospel is so that we can have eternal life here and also heaven coming. Is because if we don't go through this gospel, we are going to die in our sins and we're not going to make it to heaven. The only way to make it to heaven and to... Uh, live in eternity with Christ, time with no beginning and no end, and eternity forever and ever, ever, ever. You have got to go through the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have got to repent. We've got to be baptized. We've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And we've got to live the gospel to have eternal life beyond this life. So, let's finish this. We've got to experience the gospel right now. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, and this is the first preaching, the first apostolic preaching, the chief apostle stood up on the day of Pentecost after they had received the Holy Ghost, and they were all speaking in tongues, a supernatural phenomena, they were speaking in languages that they didn't know they were speaking, but other dialects that were around that, that day knew what they were saying, they were magnifying God, saying that Jesus Christ was the Almighty God who was manifest in flesh and paid the price for them. And they're blown away and saying, what's going on here? You guys are speaking in tongues and, and magnifying God, speaking in heavenly language. But we all know what you're saying. You're telling us that Jesus is the Almighty. What does this all mean? And so Peter stood up and he preached. It's in Acts chapter 2. And in verse 36 he starts. He says, Peter said, to thousands of people all around him. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know, assuredly, that God, the eternal spirit that we worship, Jehovah, he made this Jesus, this human being, whom you crucified, both the supreme Lord of heaven and the anointed body in which paid the price for our sins. That's what Christ means. The anointed body in which God dwelled to pay the price for your sins and my sins, the Savior, the Anointed One. Why is He an Anointed One? Because He is God made flesh. He is the mediator between God and man, the God-man, the man that had God in Him that would merge us back through salvation. Hallelujah. That's why He, being a man, could be tempt was tempted in all points, but He didn't sin. Therefore, we have a high priest that is touched with the feelings of our weaknesses. That's what that means in Hebrews. He is the high priest that is touched. We now have access through him because he became a man and was able to 
Feel the weaknesses. Feel the sufferings. Feel what sin did. And at the same time, was God in that he could pay the price. The God-man. The mediator. Praise God. Hallelujah. Powerful stuff. The gospel is awesome and powerful. So Peter stands up and says, Let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. He is supreme. He is the, the only one. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. It hit them real hard and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said to them, This is what you got to do. You got to believe and obey the gospel. And here it is. Repent. Turn away from your sinful ways and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or forgiveness or washing away of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Excuse me. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So there he said, we've got to repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. Just like the Apostle Paul broke it down to the Romans. You're baptized into his death through baptism. Raised in newness of life. There's a, there's a reason why we repent. There's a reason why we believe. There's a reason why we get baptized in Jesus' name, being dunked under the water, being submerged under the water. There's a reason why we seek to receive the Holy Ghost uh, with the evidence of speaking with other tongues. There's a reason why. Because it is the mode and formula of the new birth. It is salvation. It is the gospel. It is us escaping sin and hell and death and the lake of fire, which is the ultimate and last judgment of mankind and, and the fallen angels. We want to escape that. We want to make it to heaven. We want to get eternal rewards. So he says, The promise is unto you and to your children and to men, as many as are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. In other words, there's a legacy in this and there's a blessing in it. And with many other words, he testified and exhorted them saying, Be saved! From this perverse generation. In other words, do it now. Don't wait. None of us are promised tomorrow. We've got to experience the gospel right now. We've got to believe the gospel right now. We've got to repent right now. We've got to get baptized right now. We've got to receive the Holy Ghost right now. You've got to get your salvation and your assurance in Christ right now. Punch your ticket to eternal salvation. Punch your ticket to eternal favor. Punch your ticket to eternity that's coming right now. The gospel is right now. The good news is right now. He says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized. They did it right now. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. 3,000 men and who knows how many women and children. And then after that, they continued steadfastly and the apostles' doctrine and teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. They stood steadfast in the apostles' teaching. And they were continually in prayer and in fellowship. And that's when they were house to house. And the number one thing they did was they prayed and they shared the gospel before they even taught the intricacies of the Bible and or even wrote the Bible. They preached the gospel and they prayed and this is what God is doing in this last day is he is reviving the apostolic movement the prophetic power of the Holy Ghost and that we are going to pray more than ever before and we're going to talk about the gospel we're going to preach the gospel we're going to experience the gospel people are going to get baptized in Jesus name people are going to receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues and we're going to be in an awesome move of the flow of the Spirit and the gospel shall be propagated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, now is the time to believe. And now is the time to obey the gospel. And if you have not experienced the gospel, I urge you to experience the gospel. You have got to repent for your sins. You've got to believe the gospel. You must be baptized in Jesus' name. You've got to receive the Holy Ghost. And you've got to share this message. Because this is the glorious hour of of the body of Christ, the church of the living God. This is the glorious hour of the gospel and there is no other message. There is no other power.
but that which is Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, died, was buried, and rose again, and now is the heir of all things and the firstborn of all salvation and of all creation, and we can be partakers of such in Jesus' name. Let's pray in the name of Jesus, Lord. We ask you, God, to deal with us and touch us and bless us, God, that we, O oh Lord, will not be so nonchalant in our attitude toward the gospel. Oh God, and some of us have heard it many times, but it's just commonplace to us. And some of us have never heard it before. And this is fresh and new and glorious, God. And no matter what state we find ourselves in, God, whether we were ignorant or we were nonchalant or we were at ease in Zion or we were God apathetical or maybe we just didn't have it revealed to us and now it is revealed. God, no matter what state we are in, help us, oh God, to have a burning desire and a surge of your spirit to come upon us, God. That we, O oh Lord, will embrace the gospel. Embrace this apostolic truth that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Uh, that was instituted by God manifest in the flesh, Jesus Christ. Uh, and that we, O oh God, will embrace it and receive it, Lord. And experience it, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, and that we will teach it and preach it to all the ends of the earth, God. That because your time is near and you are coming soon. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Embrace the gospel. Receive the gospel. Experience the gospel. You must be saved now. You must repent and be baptized in Jesus' name. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. You must teach this and preach this and live this. In Jesus' name we pray, because there is no other purpose in life. There is no other message in life, because eternity is right at the door. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please uh, embrace this truth, experience this truth, and share this truth. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.